So many of the RTX laptops ship with only one stick of RAM, and you've seen plenty of footage showing how having dual channel RAM greatly improves gaming performance. The problem lies in that although some manufacturers like Dell, you know, they make it quite easy by taking, uh, allowing you to take the back off so you can do the upgrade yourself, others either use a tamper-proof sticker um, to put you off, or like the MSI GS series, have inverted motherboards making uh, you know upgrade quite daunting. So how does single channel affect the performance of say, an RTX 2060 laptop like my $1800 Dell G5 compared to my $2400 Dell G7 with an RTX 2070 Max-Q? Well, let's find out. Now this test is uh, about as apples to apples as I can do. The G5 and the G7 share the same cooling system, the same BIOS, and both ship with one 16 gigabyte of RAM. Assassin's Creed Odyssey loves dual channel RAM. You can gain nearly an extra 50% performance as it allows the CPU to boost much higher. As you can see here with my very high settings, the 2060 and the 2070 Max-Q are neck and neck. The 2060 is on the left. The CPU is just not able to feed the GPU sufficiently. And indeed, we average about 40 FPS for both cards. And the RTX 2060 consistently beats the 2070 Max-Q at lower quality settings. At least the minimums are always higher on the 2070. Battlefield 5 Ultra Settings DX11, the RTX 2070 Max-Q usage is less than the 2060, and there's definitely quite a large gap here. Crazy, really. I would imagine if you would uh, have the 2080 Max-Q, we would see something similar. Changing the quality settings paints the same picture with the 2060 being 13% faster than the 2070 Max-Q. It's not until we get to low settings we see a reversal. How about if we switch to DX12 with ray tracing? Here we are at ultra settings and again we see the 2070 Max-Q being more underutilized compared to the G5's RTX 2060. There is not a lot between the two. Switching to high increases the deficit in favor of the 2060. Far Cry 5 Ultra Settings, the 2060 is on the left, and it does run faster than the 2070 Max-Q. If we had our dual channel, the 2060 average, it averages 80 FPS, and the 2070 Max-Q gets about 89. So you can see how much performance we are giving up here. And when you are paying, say, $600 more for a more powerful GPU, I would be quite upset. As you lower the quality settings, this gap widens, as the 2070 is increasingly bottlenecked. Even at low settings, we can't reach what dual channel will give. Fortnite, Epic settings, both seem to have a decent GPU utilization, yet both run pretty similar. Now with dual channel, you'll see about 109 FPS on the 2060 and about 120 on the 2070 Max-Q. Certainly the 2060 is the best value option. As we drop down to uh, quality settings, there's not a huge change between them. Of course, Fortnite is not exactly taxing the GPU very much. Over to PUBG at Ultra Settings, Dual Channel helps the 2070 Max-Q big time in this game. You see you have 101 FPS on average versus the mid 80s here with single channel. The 2060 does benefit with Dual Channel as well, but not as much. That averaged 85. But as you can see, there is not much between them here at max settings. Lower quality settings, you see the 2070 Max-Q uh, really getting bottlenecked. Again, not something I really want to see when I spend so much more on a higher-end GPU. Finally, we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider, higher settings, and I use the inbuilt benchmark to measure the performance. The 2070 Max-Q actually gets about 30% extra performance with dual channel, whilst the 2060 gains about an extra 10%. As a result, with single channel, the 2060 beats the 2070 Max-Q, and this is maintained as we drop down quality settings. Incredible. So as you can see, even though the 2060 does benefit switching to dual channel, it is essential that you do so with a higher end GPU. Annoyingly, many stock configurations don't offer this, and the likes of the GS65 and the GS75 uh, have the RAM actually underneath the motherboard, making upgrades difficult. Well, I hope you found this useful, and if you're new to my channel, uh, make sure to subscribe. I'd like to thank you for watching, 